Hello everyone, welcome back to Atreya Crochet. So in today's video I will be showing you how to make a hat so that you can attach one of the flowers that we made last week to it and quickly get it to your mother, your wife, your daughter, your aunt, whoever. Whoever you are celebrating the day of Mother's Day for, this can be just a quick little gift that you can make. In next week's video I'm going to be showing you guys how to make this awesome hat with a brim. Um, I saw a tutorial from another YouTuber. I'll tell you all about that in next week's video. But for now, we're going to be working on this because we got a little bit of time to get one more Mother's Day gift ready. Let's get to it. So things you will need include some yarn. I'm going to be using yellow today. I think that'll be a nice spring color and it'll look nice with one of the flowers that uh, I've made. You're going to need a pair of scissors. You're going to need a stitch marker. If you don't have a stitch marker, you can use a safety pin, a paper clip. You can use yarn of a different color, just something to mark the stitches. You're going to need a darning weaving tapestry needle, and you're going to need a crochet hook. This is a medium four yarn, which usually calls for five or 5.5 millimeter US. However, I'm going to be using a six millimeter US size J hook because of my tension. Let's get to it. So we'll start out with the slip knot as always. Wrap the yarn that way, twist exchange, wrap it around that way. Pull this one over that one and off your finger. While lifting up on the one on your finger, insert your crochet hook into the hole and pull to tighten like that. All right, so now let's chain four. One, two, three, and four. And now we're going to slip stitch back into that very first chain there, okay? The very first chain. So we're gonna go all the way back, enter that chain, and get one strand or two, I'm getting one this time, and then slip stitch. So yarn over, pull all the way through, like that. And that's gonna create this little ring, okay? So now we're going to chain two, one, two, and in this hole, we're going to put eight half double crochets. The way you make a half double crochet is you yarn over as if though you were making a double crochet. Then we enter whatever it is that we're trying to crochet into. In this case, we're crocheting into the ring. It could also be like the top of a stitch or into a chain stitch, but this time we're going into that hole there. All right, so we enter the hole, yarn over, pull through to the front for three loops. Once again, just like a double crochet, one, two, three. And now when we yarn over, we're gonna go through all three loops. So go through one, two, and three. And that's a half double crochet. All right, we're going to make seven more of those. So yarn over, go into the ring. You guys can crochet over this tail if you want. Yarn over, ring to the front for three loops, one, two, three, yarn over, go through everything. That's two. Let's get to making these, you guys. Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, so those are our eight half double crochets. Now we're going to use that stitch marker, okay, which could also be a paper clip or safety pen or yarn of a different color. And we're going to mark a stitch. So here's that chain two. We're not counting that as a stitch in this pattern, okay? Uh, it was just to get us up to the height of the half double crochet. But we are going to mark the stitch that we crochet into next. So yarn over. And then we'll bypass, we'll bypass the chain two and go into the top of the first half double crochet there. So we'll slice the icing off the top of the cake like that, okay? And then we'll make a half double crochet. So yarn over, pull through to the front for three loops. One, two, three. Yarn over, go through everything. All right, and that's the stitch, you guys, that we're gonna mark, okay? So I'm just going to grab my stitch marker and put it on the top of that stitch. The reason that we're using a stitch marker for this pattern is because we're going to be working in continuous rounds. So we're not going to be chaining, you know, slip stitching and then chaining to get to the next round. We're just going to continue around and around and around. And the stitch marker helps us 
uh, to know when we're back at the beginning of the round, okay? When we're entering the next round, when we're back to that first stitch that we first made of that current round, right? So when I get back here, that's gonna tell me, okay, that's the first stitch of round two. All right, so the pattern for round two is two half double crochet in every stitch around. Well, I went into the first half double crochet of round one and I made one half double crochet. Now I need to go back in there and make a second one. So yarn over, go into the same place, slicing the icing off the top of the cake again, like that, and making a half double crochet. All right, so now, let me show you something. This is the chain two that we skipped. This right here is the stitch that we crochet into that half double crochet. Here's its top there. Make sure this is not blurry. And then here are the two stitches, the two stitches in that half double crochet. So now we're just going to go around and put two half double crochet in every stitch around. So yarn over, slice the icing off the top of the cake of the next stitch and make a half double crochet. Yarn over, go back in there for a second one. Okay, and just keep doing that. Two stitches in every one. One, back in there for two. Yarn over, here's the next one, slicing the ice and off the top of the cake for one. Back in there for two. So remember, round one had eight half double crochet. That means round two should have 16, because we're putting two in every stitch. Okay, one, back in there for two. Next one, slicing the icing off the top of the cake. One, back in there for two. Next one, slicing the icing off the top of the cake. One, back in there for two. I see the stitch marker coming up, coming up, okay. And it looks like we have one more there because this began round two, so, but we have one more right there, so we need to put two half double crochets in there. One back in there for two. All right, now let's count the stitches of this round to make sure we have 16. So starting here with the stitch marker, we can just count the tops put it like this. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and then 16. All right, so all 16 are there. So now we're going to pull out our stitch marker because we know that this begins, this is where we began, and when we crochet into that stitch, that's going to start round three. The pattern for round three will be two, one. So the pattern for round two was two, 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 two. We put two stitches in every stitch around. Now the pattern is going to be two in the first stitch and one in the next stitch. And then again, two in the next stitch thereafter, and then one, and then one thereafter, that one, okay? So this first one gets a two. So I'm gonna yarn over, slice the icing off the top of the cake and make my half double crochet. And then I'm gonna immediately put my stitch marker on it before I forget. But because it's the first one, it gets two, remember? So I'm gonna go back in there and make another one. And then in the next one, that one's gonna get one. So yarn over, slice the icing off the top of the cake of the next stitch and put one, okay? I just like to hurry up and get that. As soon as I get that first stitch made, even if I have to make two of them, I stop and I put the stitch marker on so that I don't lose my place. All right, so round three, I told you the pattern is two, one. So we did the one. So now we go back to the two, so just find the top of the next stitch or find the next stitch which is there. This one is in that one, this is the next top, so that gets two. Okay, so slice the icing, one, back in there for two, and then the next one gets one. Okay, next one gets two, back in there for two, and then the next one gets one. Okay. Next one gets two, back in there for two. Next one gets one. Next one gets two, back in there. So put the two and then the next one gets one, okay? 
The next one gets two. Slice in the icing. Back in there for the second one. And then the next one right there gets one. If the pattern is two, one, two, one, that means we should end on the one, by the way. The next one gets two. So back in there for two. And then the next one gets one. And when I see the stitch marker and I see two stitches left before I get to it, I'm like, okay, I've done this correctly because I know the pattern is two. So the next one gets two back in there for the second one. And then the final one before the stitch marker gets one. So I breathe a sigh of relief. <sighs> okay, I didn't mess up my pattern. So now we're going to move the stitch marker. So you guys, now for round four, the pattern will be two one one okay so we're gonna move the stitch marker remove it okay then we're gonna put two in this first one but I'll go in make the first one and then I'm gonna stop and before making the second one in that same stitch I'm gonna put my stitch marker in just to secure the beginning of the round <laughs> and then I go back in there and put the second one and then I said the pattern for this one is two one one. So I made my two. That means the next two stitches get one now. So next stitch one. One thereafter gets one as well. And then the pattern repeats. Next stitch two. It's one. Back in there for two. And then next stitch gets one. And then the one thereafter also gets one. Okay. So for each of these rounds, you guys, I'm going to be increasing, okay? And I'm just going to be adding another one. So round one, that was just one all around. It was eight half double crochets. Remember that initial chain two did not count. Round two, which you can't even really see where it starts now, right? That's why we needed the stitch marker so we know where the beginning is. But round two, the pattern was two, 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 just all twos, right? two stitches in every stitch around. Round three, the pattern was two, one, two, one. And now for round four, the pattern is two, one, one, okay? The pattern for round five will be two, one, 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 so two and three ones. And then round six will be two and four ones, two, one, 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 okay? And I want you to keep going around until you complete the round where you have two and then six ones, okay? All right, so this is two, one, one, that's round four. Three ones will be five, four ones will be six. <laughs> this is getting confusing. Um, five ones will be seven, and six ones should be round eight if I counted that correctly. We'll double check when I get back on, okay? But just continue going around Remember, the stitch marker tells you the beginning of that round. So you take it out, you put your, you're going to put two half double crochet in that stitch, but make the first one and then stop and replace, put the stitch marker back in before you forget, and then go back in and make the second one. And yes, so remember the stitch marker will tell you when it's time to begin a new round. And just remember to increase, you know, one more half double crochet for every successive round until you get to the pattern where it's two and then six ones, two and six ones. I'll see you there, I've talked enough. <laughs> All right, you guys, so I have my circle. I have finished and yes, it ended up being round eight, uh, which has the pattern two double crochet in the first stitch and then one double crochet in the next six. So two, six, okay. And now for the next several rounds, I am going to just make them regular rounds where I put one half double crochet in every stitch. Did I say double crochet before? You guys know we're doing half double crochet. So one half double crochet in every stitch around, okay? So we are no longer increasing. We are no longer putting two stitches in a stitch, okay? Now, if you were making this hat for like a little girl, you know, like a little Una niñita, <laughs> a little child, then maybe you would need to make your circle quite this big. But since this is for like an adult woman, that's why I want this large. Um, but also you could be making it for someone who doesn't have a really big head. 
So the number of rounds that you make will obviously depend on the size of the head of the person that you're making it for. And one thing that I always like to say, because people always say, well, how many rounds do I have to make to make it a certain size? And I think the best way to kind of teach this is to say, okay, if your circle fits the crown of the head of the person that you're making it for, then it is big enough, okay? And it also depends on the type of um, fit that you're going for. Obviously, this is going to be a tighter fit, and you guys will see the end result and why I say that. But if you were, you know, making it loose fitting, then you would want this to be bigger than the crown of the head. But I want, in this case, mine to kind of fit the crown of the head so that now that I'm going to start my non-increase rounds where I'm just putting one stitch in every stitch around, it's going to hug the head nicely as it becomes deeper, okay? And you guys will see with this round and so on, it will continue, it will start to kind of curve now into a ball shape, okay? So, yeah, it's hard to say, okay, you know, this, make this many rounds and you'll get this size bow because one, people have different tensions. Two, I'm using a, a, a larger hook than the yarn calls for because of my own tension. Uh, there are just so many factors. So I think the most universal way to explain this is to say, fit your circle on the crown of the head of the person that you're making it for. And if it fits, then you've done enough increase rounds and you can start your non-increase rounds. Okay, hopefully that helps you guys. All right, so I'm gonna take out this stitch marker. And actually, if you want, you can leave it in there. If you, it doesn't really, matter I'll show you what I mean so I'm gonna put it back after I crochet my stitch obviously so I'll put my half double crochet into that first stitch and then I'll replace it like that and then I'm just gonna put one half double crochet in every stitch around but the reason I said you could leave it in there is because you'll be able to clearly see you know where it's hard to explain <laughs> i guess i need to crochet some rounds first but if i had left it in there i could have crocheted into that stitch and saw that that was where the round began right so when i got around here even though the stitch marker was here i would be able to say that stitch is in that stitch so that's the stitch that's going to begin the next round here i have the stitch marker there telling me that but say this was a stitch marker, if it was still there, I could just easily look and say, okay, there's a stitch marker. That stitch is in that one, so when I crochet into this stitch, that's gonna begin the new round, okay? We're not changing colors. This is just gonna be, for me, yellow. So um, it's not as important, but I'm rambling and I'm giving you guys way more information than you need. So I'm just gonna start my rounds. And yeah, I would say at least maybe do 10 rounds to see how it fits. If you have the person available or if you have like a, a styrofoam head, you can fit it on to see how it's fitting to kind of get an idea of how many rounds you need to crochet. But I'm going to start out with 10 rounds. So this will be the first round, uh, non-increase rounds. I'm going to start out with 10 non-increase rounds and see how it's looking, okay? I'll check back in in a bit. All right, you guys, so I have my 10 rounds. As you can see, it's like a bowl now. And I just wanted to show you something. So here's the stitch marker. This is what I was telling you. I could leave it in and just keep crocheting. So a couple of things I want to mention. So here's the stitch marker. And you might be thinking that I need to crochet all the way here to complete the 10th round, but that's not true. So if I look at where the stitch marker is, it's in this stitch right here, okay? This is in that one where the stitch marker is. So I'm gonna count one, two, and notice how it's kind of going at a diagonal. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. So that means that when I crochet into that stitch, that would be beginning the eleventh round. Okay, so I have a couple of more stitches to make and then I will be actually done with my tenth round. So one more half double crochet and then one more there and now getting back there that would begin my 11th round okay so it's going to be at a diagonal just so you know all right so i'm done now if you wanted to 
or say the opening was too big, you overestimated and the opening was too big, you could do a round of single crochet. But that's not the case for me. So what I'm gonna do to kind of level this off is I'm gonna go to smaller and smaller stitch for the next two stitches. So since I'm making half double crochet, the next one and the next stitch, I'm just gonna put a single crochet so I don't yarn over, I just go in like that. Yeah, two loops, yarn over, go through two. And then in the next one, I'm gonna do a slip stitch. So don't yarn over, just enter and yarn over and pull all the way through to kind of make it a little bit more level, okay? Now I'm gonna chain one and cut my yarn. Fasten off and I like to bring this tail in. So I just take my crochet hook, grab the tail, yarn over, pull it through, and then act like you're chaining one. So yarn over it, pull through like that, and it creates a little knot, and it keeps the tail on the inside. And then you can weave this in. All right, so this is the hat, right? Really quick, really easy. As I said, you'll have to figure out how deep you want it. You know, obviously it depends on the size of the head of the person that you're making it for. But for the actual part that we're here for, and I told you I would show you an application this week, so you can get this crocheted up really quickly in time for Mother's Day tomorrow. Uh, we're going to add a flower. So remember I told you I left these tails. This is that iris flower. So I'm choosing, it's between this one or this one. What do you guys think? I like them both. I could see them really both been on here. Um, I'm not going to put both on, but you could if you wanted to. But yeah, I like that, but I also kind of like that. So let's go with this one. So remember I told you I left tails. Um... So this is one of the reasons why I left a tail. So that's fine. This is the back, that's the tag. You can cut that down or weave it in, like I said. And just figure out where you want this flower to go. I think if that's the back, so it'll be like this, then I think on the side like that would be really nice and cute. Then you can put it there, you know, wherever you want it to fall. So kind of up on the head, but going over the forehead, I think. So all you're gonna do, is grab your crochet hook once you figure out where you want it enter the stitch like that hook it on and then yarn over we're basically just pulling the yarn to the other side like that and pull through so yarn over and pull through like to like that okay and now we'll on the other side of the stitch, I don't know if you guys can see this, how well you can see it, but on the other side of the stitch, I'm going to pull it back through. So yarn over, to pull it back to the outside, like that. Okay. And then I'm going to go back into where I first started. This is a silly way of uh, doing it. There are many ways you could do this, but this is one way that I like. Yarn over and pull it back to the inside, like that. Okay, and then just tie a couple of knots. Now this is kind of a this is a medium sized flower, so you instead of just tying a knot, you know, because it might move a little bit more than you want it to move on the head of the person when they're wearing it. Something else you could do is grab your darning weaving tapestry needle, and we can kind of fix it, like get it to stick a little bit more. And I kind of prefer this. This is an easier way than using a crochet hook. So just go where you want. Bring the yarn in like that, right? Now it's on the inside. And then we're going to, once again, cross over a stitch. Just make sure it goes across the stitch. Don't go back in there where you came out or you'll undo what you just did, obviously. So I'm going to go up. And then I'm going to actually crochet, or not crochet, I'm going to go into somewhere at the bottom of the flower like that pulling it through like that so that I grab more of the flower and then I'm gonna go to a different place in the work in the hat and the yellow part and bring that through to that side to the inside like that okay and I'm just gonna do this a few different times until it's 
stationary enough for my liking. The flower is what I'm talking about. Obviously, this would be easier if I had a longer tail, uh, but it's okay. And even before you go back in, you can go through some more of the flower at that bottom and then go in like that. So see, I'm going through it before I go into the yellow, and now I'm going to go into the yellow like that on this side and this as you can see just kind of fixes it more to the hat like that okay all right and then on this side you can grab your crochet hook and you can do that whole knot tying trick again so just go through a nearby loop or a couple of loops whatever your pleasure is <laughs> I'm gonna try to get through a few okay yarn over pull through and then act like you're chaining so yarn over and then pull through like that, creating a little knot. Okay, You can do that a couple of times and then you can cut that down. But basically, so if I center this, there's the tail, that's the back, so I'll center it. And then it'll be like that. So when your mom or sister or aunt or daughter, whoever you're making it for wears it, it'll look very nice okay and you can go in with separate yarn and do more of this if it's still moving too much maybe you want to kind of go through part of the tail or part of the pedal to get it to fix you know to just be more planet and it's up to you okay uh so yeah that's this video sorry guys i know i'm kind of like all over the place today um i had a kind of stressful yesterday and uh, my mind is still kind of there so that's why I may not seem like my normally calm self but um, you know everything's okay I'm good um, just yeah a little scatterbrain but hopefully not so much that I didn't deliver you a very nice Mother's Day tutorial so because Mother's Day is Sunday tomorrow from when you guys watch this video um, yeah, we've run out of time to make more Mother's Day gifts. Uh, so I guess I'll have to continue this uh, series next year. But yeah, hopefully you like the three, okay? All right, guys, that's going to be it for this video. But you know I will see you in the next one. In the meantime, happy crocheting.